Hello and welcome to another cryptocurrency technical analysis where in this video I'm going to be going over the breakout that we have finally seen of our month long sideways range and explaining to you whether this is the start of a new bull run to much higher prices or whether we have just put in the high on the 2nd of June and we're actually going to be heading back down from here. So I'll be explaining to you my thesis and how I am currently trading this as well as how we got to this level and how we could have foreseen that this break was going to come. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this one. Honestly, it should like blow your mind with the technical analysis that I have for you here. Um, so I hope that you thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. And let's just get straight into the charts here, get into the technicals. And yeah, let's begin. So I guess I'll just start off by emphasizing this video is, is purely technical analysis. Okay, so we're blocking out all the news, everything else apart from the charts. Okay, and we're also not thinking we want price to go up or we want price to go down. We're trading what the chart is giving us. With that said, Let's go. So, oof, it was a nice one. It was a nice one. Obviously, we have been trading this range for quite a while. Obviously, the high of the range, we were looking at supply. The bottom of the range, we were looking at demand. And we were saying the equilibrium around the midpoint of this range was the monthly level. OK, so what happened on this rise to the what on this rise to the highs? Why was the supply not there? OK, you blasted straight through the level. Were there some early signs that you could see this was possible? Absolutely, there was. So I want to explain to you a few of the things. Um, oh yeah, I was going to say, obviously, yeah, that was pretty funny that I made that video yesterday, Bitcoin about to break out of the range. And then yes, we did in fact break out of the range. So I guess I'll give this guy like absolutely more than happy to help you on that one. And let's see if I can continue this with today's video. So what we were seeing yesterday is obviously before the breakout, this is obviously where the breakout happened. But, but coming into that breakout, you can see the open interest increasing. So what you, what we're seeing here is there's there's a few things to bear in mind. You had open interest increasing. Well, I'll show you what I was writing to my group. Um, so you had, uh, yeah, the open interest was increasing. You had bullish CVD divergences. You had trap shorts. You had a higher low. There was many things coming together of why this rise was likely. OK, and what I really liked about this rise was that I thought it was less likely that we would go here and then just rise. But what we actually had was the stop run of the low and then the grind here. OK, so it was specifically the stop of the, the run of this low. I'm trying to line up exactly. But the run of this low here at 9,339, you ran that low and then you move back up. OK, so what did you have upon seeing that? And again, this is where you need data. You need the statistics. You need to actually see what's happening live in the time. And this is where we could see we had the bullish CVD divergences form. We had trap shorts. And that just means that people really aggressively shorting when there's no need to when you formed a higher low. So having the higher low, that is bullish market structure with a lot, a lot of new shorts opening. Yesterday, we saw a massive, massive increase in the shorts opening. And this was before the run even started happening. So, you know, really, we just had a lot of trap shorts. And that's giving you the potential. That's giving you the potential. Um of obviously of, of, a, of a short squeeze where, you know, when you have so many people trying to short this. OK, and on top of that, the main factor that we have going on here was Fibonacci time. And this is what I want to emphasize to you today, the Fibonacci time perspective of how we were able to recognize that this was likely to push up and make a new high. OK, so I want to go over this. Obviously, I was giving you hints on Twitter uh, just freely, but, you know, for the full for the, for the, for the, for the full insights, obviously not so much, but nevertheless, it's giving you the little hints that that was about to occur. But what we can see here, okay, so this was last week. So on the 27th last week, I was identifying that we could very well likely put in the high on the 2nd of June. Okay, so I'm going to explain in this video exactly why and how we got this. But, you know, from back here a week ago at the lows, obviously where I was taking those longs, I was looking for the high to be put in on the 2nd of June. And this is from a relationship standpoint in terms of the chart and in terms of Fibonacci time. Okay, so the two coming together there. What we can also see, this was from a live stream that I done yesterday, uh, no, two days ago, where again, this is when we were still looking at the harmonic, but nevertheless, another push to the upside again there on the 2nd of June at 1 a.m. So this is where I was, I, you know, I was thinking back here, what, still the 1 a.m. time, 2nd of June. So night of the 1st, 2nd of June, still identifying that we should get another push up here again, according to the Fibonacci time rule that we have going on. And then obviously that's how it played out. But, uh, you know, so I'll explain to you now really how we got this. OK, so this it's crucial in trading. You have like relationships in a chart. OK, and what I refer to by this is, is it's it's based off of like moves are like copying each other. And, and you have to remember the technical analysis is essentially history repeating itself time and time again, isn't it? So when you get chart patterns, obviously this is the history like kind of repeats itself. So when you see a symmetrical triangle, you see symmetrical triangle, you think it breaks upwards because you've seen a symmetrical triangle many times. <clears throat> 
in cryptocurrency, one would say that these are re result highly in fake outs. Let's just remember that because we still have that possibility happening right now. Um, but I'm going to show you right here the Fibonacci time perspective. Okay, so I identified the relationship between this wave and this wave that we should be having here and obviously this was identified while we're, while we were at the lows um but nevertheless the more that you the more data that you have coming into this the higher or the stronger the conviction can be okay so while we're at the lows it's kind of more a uh, probability that we get it and then the more that you kind of get the data the more uh you know the more data that form basically forms the higher the probabilities okay so if that if that makes sense so the more that we saw this coming along, the, the stronger my idea was that we are going to get this push up on the second. OK, and let me show you from a Fibonacci time here. I was going after identifying the relationship here from the low to the high of this move. OK, and extending this to the lows. OK, as you can see, the one to one. And this is what I look for in, t in terms of Fibonacci time. I look for the one to ones of the relationships. And you can see how that was given to me basically on the 1 a.m. at the 2nd of June. So that's what I was looking for here. And then I'd like to show you one step further. The relationships that we had between this versus the relationships here. I was also looking at the angle and the descent and the time. So three factors coming together. I will now copy and paste this and show you how perfect the relationship was. Copying this, dragging it along from the start to the end absolute perfection that is encapsulated the low up to the high we're talking within 30 30 dollars that is that is symmetry there isn't it that is <clears throat> that is perfect symmetry that is encapsulated the angle the descent the price the time all coming together to giving you very very strong confluence okay so this is kind of what I was looking at yesterday. So why did what why did I take along yesterday? Well, we had the we had the confluences of the time aspect. So you know we were looking at the time for Fibonacci time, bullish CVD divergences, trap shorts, higher low, and then obviously um, you know suggested the higher high with the Fibonacci time. So these are the factors that we had coming together, and these longs that we were taking in the group were around nine thousand five hundred, nine thousand six hundred. Obviously, we pushed up to around 10,400. Absolutely brilliant. But I don't want to make it sound like I've done this absolutely perfectly. Although I was recognizing that we were likely to make a new high, I was taking my profits early. Okay, so I, I, I must admit, I, I locked in the majority of my profit too early. And that's because I had in the back of my mind as possibly rejecting off around uh, 9,850. All I would highlight on this is it's massively important to take profits. So yeah, I took profits too early, but at least I didn't short. So yesterday I was saying, you know, I'm not actually interested in shorting any of this rise. Okay, so I didn't short, for example, 9,700, 9,800, 9,900, 10,000. I didn't short any of those levels because I recognized, you know, what was what was likely to come. Again, it's no it's no guarantee, but it was it was highly probable, let's just say, when all the factors are coming together the bullish market structure, the higher lows, the fact that the, the supply, as you know, simply from our channel perspective, we were saying we, we short the highs, we long the lows. But then when you can look into the chart and you can get data and see that the supply is, is non-existent at the highs, well, then you're much more likely to go through if no one's actually interested in selling this time. Because you've hit the level so many times, sellers have essentially ran out. That's when you then fly through the level, isn't it? And we could see that yesterday in terms of, you know, really the net shorts, which were just going crazy. And I mean, this is the thing. You might think a lot of shorts opening is bearish, but it's not. You know, a lot of shorts opening was actually bullish because they get squeezed. This is how cryptocurrency moves, specifically Bitcoin. It's crazy. But, you know, we saw that massive. Look at the open interest there. Open interest, so healthy, so lovely. And, you know, that's really what led you to that rise. And that's why I was, you know, really saying to everyone yesterday in the champions group that I'm not interested in taking a short. You know, I was saying short is not a good idea here. So I, I, I didn't take a short, didn't have any shorts waiting. Um, you know, so I was pretty content with that yesterday. The only trade I took uh, during the day uh, was, was that long from 9,600. I then did take a short around 9,000, uh, no, sorry, did take a short around 10,200 and I am in another short position right now. So those are the two shorts I took, uh, but they were both above 10Ks. Um, and yeah, so that that's basically blow my, own, own, <laughs> blow my own, own horn a little bit, but you know, that technical analysis was incredible, absolutely incredible. So now the thesis, let me go over, now I've explained to you why we got this rise, how I identified that it was likely to come on the 2nd of June and how it did happen on the 2nd of June, that now we have to come to the question of, okay, that's brilliant. We identified the rise, we took the longs, but now is it time to close the longs and enter shorts or is it time to continue longs and expect much higher prices? 
Well, very simply, this is how I'm approaching this. I am currently in a short position. My short position is in profits. I would just like to highlight that. But nevertheless, I'm in a short and I'll, and I'll zoom out a little bit here. So let's just hide everything on the chart and go up to the daily. OK, so really, excuse me, you really you have some two, two major levels where I can say with a higher conviction, yes, the bull market has, has, has likely started or whether no, we are actually likely to see lower prices. And I mean, the key level that has to be this 10,600, doesn't it? It just has to be. And look at it. Resistance, resistance. This is still another lower high. So let's just not get carried away here because high, lower high, drop. This is potentially a lower high for another drop, isn't it? So that's why I'm just, just highlighting here. I'm not going to get carried away because, yes, we have broken out of this consolidation region, but the volume upon the break is very low. Yes, that volume could come in upon breaking 9,600. And if it does, that's very, 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 very bullish. But I am trading this with the perspective of... Um, not necessarily that I want to be correct or right, but really the perspective of what makes the most sense to me here in terms of the technicals. And I'm seeing exhaustion. Yeah, I can't even pronounce that words right. <laughs> What's happening to my brain today? It's because I was up I, because I identified that at 2 a.m. I, I was staying up last night till late because I was re I wanted to be ready to trade it. So I am not going to lie. I'm a bit sleepy this morning. Um, you can probably tell. But basically, yeah, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying here is I'm not going to get too aggressive on the longs while we are below that key resistance level. OK, so really you break 10,600 and that is really, really bullish, especially if you close above it. Obviously, you don't want to swing failure pattern. But if you close above that, that's that's breaking out of the major downtrend channel that's broken out of this consolidation. And it's also started to change massive market structure on the high term time frames. That's very, very bullish indeed. But one has to say the, the, the RR of, the, of, of taking along at this level is, is greatly diminished. So from an intraday perspective, I am in a short position right now. I, I, that, that said, I wouldn't be surprised if we do push up for another attempt at the highs here or at least the 50 percent of it. You know, it would, would be a bit of a surprise if you don't at least attempt the 50 percent, which is just the 0.5 Fibonacci level. That would be a surprise. So I am aware of that and I'll be looking at the data of how we approach these levels. But truly from a technical perspective, I see a little bit of exhaustion or, or lack of buyers coming in above these highs. That's not really what you want to see if you're looking for continuation. Um, so, yeah, from, a, from the short term, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a massively key, like massive, 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 massive key resistance at 10,600. You break that and then I would have to lean, you know, really bullish. And, you know, is it likely that we come down to lower levels again? We'll, we'll take it a step at a time. You know, the people that say you're never going to see Bitcoin below 10,000 again. You know, this is a, a barbaric statement to make because anything's possible. But um you know, I, I would say it's less likely if you break that that key resistance level, but nevertheless, anything's possible. But, um, you know, so that's the key resistance for me. And then really key support 9800. OK, so you don't want to be coming back below this channel, do you? If, if you come below that channel, then you have a massive deviation of the highs. And then it is much more likely that we put in the high. Let's just do it again. We can expect a high on the 2nd of June. I would love it. I would love it <laughs> so, so, so much if that was our high last night. I, I, I truly would. Because I could just basically just like retire and just say, you know, there we go. There's the second of June call. Um, but, you know, um, you know, th th that, <laughs> that would be my personal opinion, I suppose. So, yeah, I would love this to be the high, but let's wait and see how the chart comes. I think you have the opportunity of a long. Absolutely. You do have the opportunity of a long with the back test of this channel high. So actually you could you could get aggressive at a long now if you want to, you know, have a have a, you know, not financial advice, but you could be looking to long this stop back below the channel. And if you believe this is the breakout, well, then you're risking like 3% for potential 100% sort of gains. You know, if, if you believe this is the start of the bull run, then you have the opportunity of an amazing long position here, don't you? So that's something for you to decide. I'm not going to tell you at all how to trade this. I'll give you the technical analysis, which is you have big resistance, 10,600. Breaker, that's pretty bullish, if, especially if you get the volume increase. That's key. And open interest increasing. And then key support, 9,800. Coming back below that is very bearish indeed. So those are your kind of intermediate levels. Um, you know, really, if you want a better short, you, you might want to wait to higher prices. I'm getting a bit aggressive because of the funding rate. So I'm happy to collect the funding rate. I'll just get paid for that, basically, by being in a short. And it's a big big funding rate on this period. So I'm going to stay in my short for the funding, basically. Um, I can't turn down that payment, but uh, that's how I'm viewing this. OK, and one more time, I'll show you the relationships that we saw, um, you know, the relationship between this wave and just look at it, how it times the high there. Just perfect. We had everything coming together. The Fibonacci time, 
the descent, the trap shorts, the net longs, um, you know, the open interest, the the bullish divergences onto CVD, everything coming together. And I just want to emphasize one more time, trade the charts, trade the technical analysis. You could have seen it was likely this rise was coming using these factors, using the Fibonacci time coming together to give a very good long. And, um, you know, I hope that, I hope this video has been insightful. People, people loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, how brilliant was that? I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been insightful to you, what I'm kind of looking at, how I'm identifying these things, and, uh, you know, really then being able to identify why it was not a good time to short yesterday, why it was more likely we were going to push through, okay? So why did I, why I entered a day trade long, why I was not interested in the shorts, you know, these are all things that you can learn from, you know, these type of videos. So I hope that it's been insightful. You can use this in your technical analysis and, um, you know, have a brilliant day. Have an absolutely brilliant day. I'm very content. Hope that you are too. And thank you once again. Cheers and goodbye. Bye. <laughs>